So for all my viewers here in the US, we're about two weeks away from celebrating Christmas. I thought I might do this video to recap a couple of the games from this year that have been samurai or ninja themed games. It's been a really good year, so I'm going to cover Sekiro, Neo 1, even though it's from 2017, because Neo 2 came out this year, and also Ghost of Tsushima. So let's get started. So originally my review of Ghost, Neo, and Sekiro went over 45 minutes with editing. I decided to break it up into three videos. So if you take a look on my channel, there are reviews for the other two games as well. Now let's go ahead and get started with this one. Now let's cover the Neo series. For Neo 1, I've got over 350 hours into it. I made it to Way of the Neo, which is New Game Plus 4, meaning that I've gone through the game five times. There's an end game thing called the Abyss, where you go down floor by floor by floor. I made it down 50-some floors. Uh, it's really long and arduous, and I simply didn't want to spend the time going through all the rest of those floors, but I've got a lot of hours into that. that excuse me. Got a lot of hours into it, so I feel like I have a pretty good grasp around reviewing it. For Neo 2, there are only two DLCs out so far, so I'm on New Game Plus 3 and about halfway through that, which is Dream of the Wise. The last one, which is DLC 3, should be Dream of the Neo if they follow the same paradigm as Neo 1, so I'm about three quarters or more through Neo 2 as well. Now Neo 1 came out in 2017 and has had three DLCs since then. Neo 2, just dropped here in 2020, has had two DLCs. There's a third one that's coming out in December this month. And the Complete Edition, which will be coming out for PC, which will be the base game plus all three DLCs, will be coming out in February. I think I'm going to hold off on the third DLC and get that Complete Edition for PC, just like I did for the first Neo. Uh, I'm partial to playing on the PC just because I like Steam for it. PlayStation 4 has been fine, but there's something I'm just more partial to Steam for that. Now as far as platforms, both Neo and Neo 2 are available for PlayStation 4 or PC with the caveat that as I mentioned, Neo 2 will not be available for PC until February 2021. For difficulty, I would say Neo 1 is actually a little bit harder than Neo 2 is. I would give Neo 1 a hard difficulty for sure. It's the first game where I've been stuck on the essentially tutorial mission and first mission for almost 12 or 15 hours. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but it was a couple days worth. There's a lot of difficulty spikes in the game that people frequently get stuck on, and by following some of the forums on Reddit, I've seen people getting stuck on the same thing, so I would certainly call that a high. Neo 2 has some quality of life improvements and has also scaled back the difficulty just a little bit. It's easier than Neo 1, and it's probably about on par with the difficulty of Sekiro. Now the environments for Neo 1 and Neo 2, they're very good. They're very similar to Sekiro, same sort of theme. They look very Japanese. You can definitely tell where you are. The graphics are up to par for modern standards. There's nothing that I can really find fault with on them. Now as far as setting for both Neo 1 and Neo 2, they're set in sort of a parallel universe sort of Japan, I guess is the only way I can think of to describe it. It's based in Japan in actual historical settings with historical battles, with historical people, and some events that may or may not have happened similar to any of the Assassin's Creed games if you've played those, except with the addition of yokai, which are Japanese demons, monsters, ghosts, uh, supernatural things to that effect. So you're not only fighting humans, half of what you're fighting in the game are these different yokai beasts, which I found really interesting because I find yokai in general to be a fun subject, so seeing them all in Neo and being able to pull up the information on them within the game once you've killed them a certain number of times was really cool to be able to read more about some of them that I got to fight in the game that I didn't actually uh, recognize in any way before, so it was a nice little learning experience as well. Now as far as the world type, it is a map-by-map -map mission based system, so you see a map, you pick a dot on the map to do your mission. There's no open world exploration. It's completely self-contained within those missions. And within those missions, every primary mission that had a specific map 
that map often gets reused for submissions. Now they'll put blocks in certain things so that you have to go alternate paths for it, or they'll put different goals so that what you're looking for is in a different spot, but the entire area is the same. So once you've learned the map, that comes in handy for any of the subsequent missions that also use that same map. Now as far as combat, there are three stances. There are low, medium, and high. And within low, medium, and high, you have a light attack and a strong attack as well as each specific weapon getting its own set of skills that are unique to that weapon. There are also a lot of weapons. There are six or seven for Neo 1 for melee weapons and three for ranged. Neo 2 added another four weapons to that mix. So there's a wide variety of weapons, a wide variety of skills. The combat is very, uh, very good for that. It's one of the strongest things to the series is its combat. Now there is a stamina system similar to Dark Souls. It's called Key, but it's basically the same sort of thing. You have a bar when you attack, it takes away something from that bar. And as that bar eventually depletes all the way down, then you get winded, which means you can't attack and you're highly susceptible to any attacks from the enemy. Certain skills take more key to perform. Heavy attacks take more key to perform. There are stats you can raise that gives you more key or makes it recover quicker. It's a nice little way to balance so that you're not just running in and trying to attack, 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 attack. So even though it doesn't have a posture system like Sekiro, it tries to keep things balanced by making sure that you can't just run around and do things willy-nilly like that. Even blocking takes key, depending on the type of armor you're wearing, light, medium, or heavy, and your toughness rating and some other uh, intricate details for that. That affects how much key you lose, even from blocking, from dodging things like that, so it's a very cool system that really balances out between the different types of builds as well. Now as far as character type, there are lots of builds. It's heavy on loot. You can customize almost all of your equipment. There's five slots for armor. There are two melee weapons that you can swap between, two ranged weapons you can swap between, and even accessories. So there's a lot of loot. There's a lot of RPG type elements to that game, which is one of the things that I really enjoy about it. As far as builds, there has to be millions of possibilities, if not all the way up into the billions. It is just so extensive between the weapons you can have, the weapon focuses you can have, the types you can have between light, medium, heavy, builds focused around magic, builds focused around ninjutsu, builds focused around melee, builds focused around range, and a ton of uh, sub-specializations within them. It's just immense how well that this game allows you to pick your own customized build, and if you do a New Game Plus, you can completely change to a different one. There's a respec system where you can keep all of your experience and just reset your stats and try out a completely different build, and you can do that as many times as you want. I tried it three or four times with Neo 1 for a little bit more variety as I tried focusing on different weapons, and it's just fantastic. I really enjoy it. Now, as far as stealth in this game, you can do a ninja-focused build that focuses more on ninja weapons, ninja techniques such as throwing stars, uh, shuriken, kunai, bombs, a few things like that. There are some special skills that let you sneak around enemies and sneak around the level. I don't find them overly helpful unless I'm doing a targeted run where I'm trying to just run through a mission and get a loot drop or just run to the boss to try to farm them for something because every enemy that you pass up and don't kill is experience lost. So unless you're trying to speed run something, that's not very useful. None of the bosses can be stealthed in any way. Unlike Sekiro, you can't attack them before they see you and take off half of their health. So while there's a little bit of stealth to it, it's far from a viable focus in the game. Now for replayability, it has fantastic replayability. If you have the base game, there's New Game and New Game Plus for both Neo and Neo 2. So each DLC that you buy adds another new game on top of it, all the way up to plus four, as well as adding in other little things to it. So the base game has new game and new game plus. When you get to new game plus, you can start getting divine weapons. When you get the first DLC, you can start getting ethereals. Uh, I believe the, four, the second DLC, which would be the fourth new game, you can level up your guardian spirits in Neo 1. So each of the DLCs, brings in some extra things to the new game. And for DLC 1 and 2 in Neo that brought in new weapons, it brings in the Odachi and uh, Tanfa as weapons for that. So it not only brings additional levels, it brings in new equipment, it brings in a new game plus. So 
The DLCs at 10 bucks each are definitely a, a good bargain for that. And if you pick up the complete edition, you might be able to catch it on sale. Neo 1 with complete edition went on sale for 20 bucks a while ago. So that's you know less than the cost of the three DLCs had you bought it, not even counting the game itself. So keep an eye out for those on Steam. Those are great to try to catch. May, may be able to see that on Neo 2 in the next few months once it comes to PC as well. Now for story depth, Neo 1 had a decent story. It did seem a little bit brief and some of the missions are so long in between that you start to forget a little bit of the story sometimes. The story never went really in depth, but it was enough to be cohesive. I still enjoyed it. Uh, it was pretty good overall. There's some memorable bits. It's more memorable than Sekiro to me, but it still wasn't quite up to par with what I'd hoped for for a modern game. But I very much enjoyed seeing all the people, the historical battles. Now, if you don't know a lot of Japan's history or you're not familiar with some of the names, the locations, the battles, the story is probably even more boring, boring to you. So keep that in mind. Neo 2 jumps around a little bit more. Uh, for Neo 2, there is character customization, but the biggest thing that hurt the story, at least for me in Neo 2, is your character never talks for the entire game. And that was really off-putting to me. It was hard to feel like I was getting immersed in the game when my own character doesn't even talk. Felt sort of like I was just watching something and not really involved in it. So that really affected the storyline for me. Um, it was still a good game. The combat is better. The weapons drop and everything is better. There are more weapons, so it's made a lot of improvements. But I felt like the storyline was just a little bit weaker. Now for Neo 1, there is no character creation. However, you can do something called refashioning, which means any of the armors that you pick up or the weapons, be they melee or ranged, you can change them to look like any other weapon or armor that you're capable of crafting. So if you wanted to be able to equip heavy armor and make it look like you were running around in ninja gear, you can do that. It's a little bit weird, but hey, you do you. Have fun with it. You can change any of the weapons to look like another weapon of that type. So you can equip a katana and have it look like any other katana that you're able to craft, but you can't equip a katana and make it look like a nodachi, and you can't equip a nodachi and make it look like a kusarigama. But it's nice that when you pick up something that you like and you like the stats for it, that you don't have to have a mix and match appearance if you're mixing up equipment. Neo 2 does have a full character creator. You can pick from male or female. You can customize everything, hair color, eye color. It's pretty extensive, but again, given that they don't really talk, I felt like that was just a little bit of visual fluff. Once you put the armor on and everything and you're staring at the back of their head for everything short of a cutscene, it really didn't make that much of a difference. And if you have the helmets on, in the visual for that, then there's literally no difference whatsoever except for the height of the character. Once you've actually created them, everything else looks exactly the same minus the cutscene. So it's a cool little addition. I just wish that there was a little bit more to it. So what are the best points of Neo and Neo 2? Uh, definitely the replayability. Uh, if you're the type of person that likes running through and farming things for random drops or not guaranteed drops, this has a lot of it, like a lot. Neo 2 brings even more to the table by having droppable weapon skills. Certain bosses will drop certain skills for certain weapons so you can unlock hidden techniques by beating those bosses if they drop that skill. So that's a whole other level of farming and running through bosses and gives you motivation to learn the boss, learn the attack patterns, learn how to take them down as quickly as possible and keep running your luck on it and see how quickly you can get it. Now as far as weapons, I had to write myself a list because I tried six times and I could not remember all these in a reasonable enough time to rattle them off, so pardon me while I use a cheat sheet here. Weapons for Neo 1 and 2 include Katana, Dual Swords, Kusari Gama, Axe, Spear, Odachi, and Tanfa for melee weapons, Bows, guns, and cannons for ranged weapons. Neo 2 included all of those and also brought to the table hatchets, switch glaives, split staff, and fists. Now two of those weapons, the uh, split staff and the fists, are tied to DLC 1 and 2 for Neo 2, and the Odachi and Tanfa are tied to DLC 1 and 2 from Neo 1. But by far one of the strong points in this game is its replayability and the 
not just the ability to go back through and play the game again, but to be able to completely customize it, do a different build. It's still the exact same storyline going through again, but the missions take on a whole different aspect. If you tried a heavy Odachi tank build on one and you decide to go for a quick moving katana one on the next and maybe a ranged spear type build with some medium armor on the next, there's just a whole lot more that brings some variety to replaying the same level and same bosses in a different manner. So I would highly recommend going through some of the new games for that. Plus, on the new games for Neo, there's a bar that you have to fill for progress into the next area. So if the first area is 10 missions, on New Game Plus, you only have to finish like three or four before it opens up the next one. You don't have to redo every mission that you did on the previous playthrough. So you can, to some extent, breeze through the next new game and the one after and the one after, as long as your level's up to par, your gear's up to par, or you're just awesome at the game and can do stuff without getting hit. So for the worst points, I would say in Neo 1, there are a couple walls where you simply hit a very hard part of it. And until you figure out how to get around it, or can just sometimes luck out of it like I did on one of them, it's a very difficult and frustrating game to get through, but it is really rewarding once you finally destroy that boss, or in some cases make it through with like 2% of your hit points and just randomly mashing buttons and hoping for the best. But once you fight them again later on in the game and you're like, oh, I beat you, I know you, I can totally stomp you, it's a really good feeling. Now, worst point for Neo 2, sort of like I mentioned, your character never speaks, so I felt like the story simply wasn't that engrossing, even though it's set in Japan with historical people and historical events. I never really felt as pulled into the story as I did for Neo 1, and since Neo 1 wasn't an immensely strong story, that's really saying something. I've seen some people say that the Neo 2 story is okay, but at the end of the day, if you're playing the Neo series, its biggest draw is the combat system, the loot drop, the character building, and all those elements. The story isn't the strongest draw to that game for most people. So I would still recommend it. So what's Neo a great choice if you like? It's a great choice if you like in-depth combat systems, if you like advanced and complex character building, or if you don't, you can just look up builds by other people and just kind of match up on their equipment and run from there. There's hundreds if not thousands of YouTube videos on setting up builds or just flat out use all this equipment to do this sort of thing so you don't have to come up for, with those from scratch. It's also a great game if you like historical events and people in Japan or a great game if you like or are interested in the yokai. Not all of them are one-to-one -one matches for what the historical accounts of the yokai are or I shouldn't say accounts but you know historical stories, the legends, the myths, whatever whatever label you want to put to them for that but seeing the yokai in the game was kind of interesting you can see zombies in other games and it's simply a zombie but seeing an actual yokai that i've seen from some of my books that was just kind of cool for me so if you're into that sort of thing that also is a, a definite plus for the neo series so that's going to wrap up my review for this game even though this was a video game focused video my channel covers all things samurai that's video games, weapons, armor. I'm going to have some upcoming videos on how do you put on samurai armor, common issues with samurai armor, displaying the samurai armor. I'll also be reviewing a few movies, some video clips that I've found on the internet that I think are both interesting and also very terrible. So I'll review and provide some of my commentary on those. But anything and everything Samurai is what I intend to have on this channel. So if that's something that interests you, hit the subscribe button below. Keep an eye out for my future videos. And with that, we're going to close out. This is Samurai James saying thanks for watching and sayonara.